so when, when I asked to join the band, he said, you know, you can come and probably do some songs with us on stage because he wanted to, to form a kind of Motown organisation. But Malcolm's the kind of person who's so unorganised, he could never do that. And um, he asked me if I'd come along and sing a couple of numbers on the stage with him. And that was my first ever show, it was in 3,000 people. And I sang a song by Peanuts Wilson, mm -hmm. it's a rockabilly song called Cast Iron Arm. I don't know if you remember that song, somebody out there must remember it. It's, a, it's an American song. And that was my e first ever appearance on stage and after that I thought, yeah, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Before I went on stage I was really frightened and then suddenly, I mean, the, uh, the actual sub-manager guy at Fowl Out well, hated me. He said I was really <laughs> grotesquely overconfident. I mean, that was fear more than anything. I went out and I kind of, <laughs> you know, who are you looking at? And kind of really, you know, I got good reviews anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to act in videos. I mean, I think, you know, I, I hate acting in videos. I think rock stars are terrible actors. You know, I just think it's, uh, and especially in three minutes, how can you make history in three minutes, you know? I mean, a lot of the videos are very similar in a way. I kind of like to, to use images and cultural images. And I like to also make funny videos. You know, we always, always put some kind of outtake in the video. Like, I don't know if you've seen the Mystery Blind video, but there's a great shot of Mikey where he goes, because there, there's these two tie boxes and one kicks the other one mm -hmm. in, the, in the lower region. And also things like when Mikey's hat blew off in the chest to point, poison my video. There's a, a great section in Our Time Before You Went Wrong and Roy had learned this dance routine and they got it wrong. And, you know, John kicks Roy. You know, it, we always use those things because I think you've got to have a certain element of humour in what you're doing. It's only because I wear makeup that people, I mean, obviously, when the people see me on TV, they imagine me to be sylph like and very small. And because um, it, usually a guy of my size would look quite funny and oh, I mean, I look good in makeup. I mean, I know that doesn't mm -hmm. sound very modest, so forgive me. But um, I do it properly. I mean, if I thought I looked stupid, I wouldn't wear it. Mm -hmm. But I think there are people around who do. You know, there are certain guys who would put makeup on and you would fall off your chair laughing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, know if you, you have like a six o'clock shadow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that, you know, it's just because there's a real contradiction in size. But I think that's good. Because people, you know, like, I mean, a lot of people, especially women journalists, the real bitchy ones, they come along and they're, they're hoping that they're going to kind of get one over on you. And, I mean, they, they don't realise that I've been, I've been in the ring for the last two and a half years. Because we're successful, I try to explain to people that, I mean, there are certain artists in the business who make it look very glamorous. I mean, the media makes rock and roll look very glamorous. I've tried to open up the shell a bit, and I've tried to kind of you know, change the kind of idea of a rock star in the sense that, you know, we don't take drugs, we don't have to sleep with our fans, we, we don't smash up hotel rooms, you know, we don't treat people like dirt. I mean, I believe that, you know, there's a new generation of, of artists who have respect for their bodies and for their mentality and for what they're doing, for also for the people around them, including the fans. And I think that's something that's, that's very good and very positive. I think a lot of the old rock stars are now waking up with the house on fire. All three of those songs were platinum singles from Kissing to Be Clever. We'll be back with much. I believe that you, f you, you very rarely find a real love. I mean, you find love at bus stops, in delicatessens, in supermarkets, but you very rarely find love in a nightclub. Everybody goes out to nightclubs to find someone to sleep with, mm -hmm. and they never do. They all go home miserable and penniless and drunk. <coughs> different levels of, of acceptance with dressing up. I mean, a man can go to work five days a week as a trucker, and maybe Friday night he wants to take out his wife, he dresses up. Is he any more honest or, you know, eccentric than I am? You know, I mean, I do what I do for a reason, the same as he does, you know, or a woman. If a woman, you know, I mean, people change their underwear because it's, it's uncomfortable to wear dirty clothes, you know. And I think that I just do it because it, it definitely makes me feel better. And I do think I look ugly without makeup. But by the same token, if I ever decide to stop wearing it, I, you know, I'll still be able to give interviews. And, you know, my advice to anybody who wants to, to, to get cheap fashion, they should just rip up a dishcloth, you know, and get your mother to make it. I mean, God, there's so many women around who can make clothes. You know, I mean, these, these shirts and things were made by some students it's today. Wonderful. I mean, I got some coats given to me today and yesterday from some fashion students in Canada. So, I mean, that's an example of what young people can do. You know, that, that's, that's what should be encouraged. You should, you know, I mean, high street stores always rip people off. You know, don't go to stores. Go to, the mother, go to your mother's linen cupboard and cut up the sheets. Come, 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 come. Of course it changes you. You know, you can't come from nothing and have a lot of things and not change. Mm -hmm. But it has, I think it's changed me for the better. I'm certainly, because I see things for what they are. I know that five years ago people would have spat at me. And so that stops me from being big-headed. 
you know, because it can happen all over again. I think people, I believe that this society we live in is definitely in the dark ages. If somebody was being hung in the local square, we'd all be down there throwing tomatoes. You know, do you think we're any different? I really don't. I mean, you know, if you look at the, you know, it's 1984 and we still, you know, you still, we still look at a guy and say, even though I've said a million times, you know, that, what, that I'm not promoting any kind of sexual image, we still have people saying, you know, that I'm a sexual deviant, you know. I mean, you know, I haven't even got a sex life. <laughs> How can I be a sexual deviant? Culture Samakum. Uh -huh. You know, rock and roll is rock and roll to me. Rock and roll is what it is. You know, it'll never be any different. I think, obviously, you put your own ideas into rock and roll. But I think that when, you, when I'm on stage, I try to communicate with the audience, and I try to make them responsible for the show. You know, my attitude is that it's their show. Just a note here, Culture Club's second album, Color by Numbers, is reported eight times platinum in Canada. One of the most interesting individuals to enter our lives in quite some time, and an interviewer's delight. Just ask the question and get out of the way and let the boy talk. Thanks again to Sandra Fair of Coming Attractions for asking the questions on our behalf. Next week, we talk to George and Barry of Golden Earring.